Welcome to Spectralink Productions video production blog. In this production blog we will continue with the setup of the Mental Ray Fast Skin Shader in Maya of our dog monster. In the last video production blog we set up the backscatter and here you can see the textures that we used. These textures here are for displacement. These texture nodes we used to control the depth of the backscatter as well as the radius. They're the same texture but they're used in two different file texture nodes so we can set the alpha gain differently per set. As you can see here for the for the depth we set the alpha gain to 30 which means that where it is pure white it will have a depth of uh, 30 into the into the mesh. As you can see here the radius is set to 8 which means depth means how far it's going to go in about 30 centimeters and then once the light penetrates it's going to spread out about eight centimeters. Another way to think about it is depth is how far into the body it's going to penetrate and radius would be the amount it's going to glow after it does penetrate. And over here you can see the textures we created for that. They give it some color variation because our monster is going to have very different color patches. We're going to have this dead blackened look over here. We're going to have raw skin over here. We have these blisters here. So we want to have very different looks. So between these three sets of textures We've controlled not only the color, but the intensity of the back scatter radius. And you can see the final product here. This is coming from the left side. This is the blister on the front left arm. These are the blisters up on the top. You can see here the scattering in the back. The tail is kind of getting that green look, so that's that, that's that dead color. You can see the subscattering here and the blister on that leg as well. If we look at it from the right side, it's subtle, it's hard to tell, but if you look closely, you can see the, the backscattering here on the right arm, the backscattering here on the leg, and of course the blisters are popping up really nicely. And again, that greenish look here on the tail. So now that we've got the backscatter taken care of, and we're fairly happy with that, next would be to work on the next layer, which is the subdural. So what we need to do is now we've got the backscatter working, we're going to kill the weight to that. Here's the backscatter weight. We're going to set that to zero. It says here mid subsurface weight. We're going to set this to one. So now you see the shader balls are turning to a kind of orange color. That's because that is the default color for the subdermal scatter layer or the mid scatter layer. It usually represents the fatty layer. So it has a default color of this kind of fatty orange color. We have this light that we have set up that's perpendicular to the camera and that was set up for the backscatter. We want the light to shine forward so we're going to rotate that around so it's pointing towards the animal instead of back at the camera. And so now let's do a test render. Okay, so now we see a big glowing orange mess. And why is that? It might have been better if we had gotten the angle from the other side of the monster, but we'll work on that later. So why is it a big glowing orange mess? Well, the subdural layer basically has the same kind of scatter radius as the backscatter. Notice it doesn't have a depth. So you notice that the subdural scatter has a radius value very much like the backscatter, but it doesn't have a depth. That's because the subdural and epidural are designed to have the light hit it from the front. It will then spread out from where the light hits it. So all we have is a radius. That's really all we need to tune at this point is the radius. So let's go ahead and, and again, it's a bit of just trial and error. But what we're going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unparent that light. In fact, let's just kind of hide that for now, turn it off. And then let's cut that subdermal scatter radius by half and then see what effect that has. Now eventually I'm going to want to control where that radius is hitting much like I did with the backscatter by applying those textures to it again. But right now I just kind of want to get a gross idea of how much of a radius I want. So let's go ahead and do another test render. Okay, so this is a bit better. I think it needs to be taken down a bit more. But at least now you're getting the idea. Um, it's no longer glowing and spreading completely across the body. You're now seeing where it's, it's coming to a stop. We'll go ahead and take it down by another 
half and see how that works, but you're starting to see the idea. I've toned it down a little bit more, now you can see how the subdura is falling off. If it's too high, it's going to look like it's glowing, so we want to make sure it's low enough to where it's got that sense that light is scattering across the surface and through the surface, but not glowing like some kind of plastic toy or something. So this is a good starting point. Next we're going to bring in those texture files and try to get some better control of the subdural scattering. And we will do it pretty much the same way that we did with the backscatter. We will bring in another group of file texture nodes. We'll bring in the same texture that we have there and we will set the alpha gain and we'll start with an alpha gain of 6 and see how that looks. Now remember even though this is a color texture because it is being plugged into the, the radius of the subdural layer, the file texture is converting that to an alpha channel. So it's only getting one value, not three for the RGB, just one as a grayscale. So in order to increase the value, so pure white is not one, but it's six, we have to increase the alpha gain. And that will act as a multiplier, just like we did with the backscatter radius and backscatter depth. Okay, so here we have it now with our subdural scatter radius. I pulled it down a little bit further to about six, so we're seeing where light hits and then it spreads out. And uh, so the only thing left to do is to give it a color channel and then to set the the next layer, which is the, the epidural layer. So here we have our dog monster with the subdermal layer on and we can see we got the nice uh, raw fleshy underneath the skin look here going for us which is what we want we will keep moving forward and the next step will be to put the epidural layer which is the top layer of our skin on top of this and now we're going to set up the epidural so just as we have done in the previous two times what we're going to do is kill the weight to the subdermal so here's our mid SS weight or our subdermal so we set that to zero now we're going to set the front weight to one so again same with the uh, subdermal layer the epidural or front subsurface layer really only has a radius that's really the only value we need to tweak we're going to have the color coming in or the light coming in is going to hit the surface and then we only need to control how much it's going to bleed across the surface once it hits. So right now the it, the radius is set to 8. So let's go ahead and give that a quick test render and see what that looks like. Okay so here we go. And as you can see it's kind of glowing. We are getting some shadows here. We can probably tone that a bit but before we tone it down I want to go ahead and plug in the color maps so we can take a look at what it is with color because that tends to affect a little bit. I'm just going to take this down to about 6. Because this is the top layer I'm not going to put in the maps to control the radius as I did with the other two because being the top layer it should be fairly uniform what areas are going to accept light and what areas aren't unlike the backscatter in the subdermal which has to take into account things like uh, bone and tissue mass and stuff like that. This is just going to be the top layer so I think I can get away with just controlling the radius from up here. But if I if that turns out to not be the case I can always take those same maps or even create new ones like I have down here and simply plug those in. So real quickly I'm going to create those epidural layers. Mall with an M. So what I'm doing now is I'm just simply desaturating it a bit. Because this is the top layer, it's not going to catch a whole lot of these of the light. It's going to pretty much penetrate through and hit the next couple layers. So we're just desaturating it just a bit. I may choose not to do that later, but we'll give it a shot this way first and see how it works. 
So right now I'm just generating out the color maps. But one thing I'm going to do for the arm here is I'm going to copy this layer. And the reason for this is because, one, I want to save that color information in case I want to go back to it. Uh, but more importantly is that I want to paint out these veins here. The veins are not on the surface. They're in the subdermal layer. And if you take a look at our subdermal layer, we got the veins in there. I want that to do the work for the veins. And in fact, if anything, we could probably paint those veins back into the subdermal layer since they, their colors got tweaked a bit, but one thing at a time. So right now I'm just going to start cloning some of those out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone it on another layer so that way I can uh, control how much of that is actually visible because I may want some faint uh, coloring of the veins in there, in which case I can simply alter the opacity of the top layer and get it in there. So we'll get back to this. I'll pause it as I do this and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so a couple of things. One, I had misnamed from the previous example all these subdermal layers as epidermal. epidermal. So I have changed all those file names and remapped them. I've also saved out all the color textures, including the modified one for the arms where I've painted out the veins, because again, I want that to show up in the epidermal, or in the subdermal layers, not the top layers. And that'll help create the illusion that the veins and everything are actually underneath the skin. I didn't paint out all the, the black veins because that's a little bit different. That's supposed to be the infection spreading and some of that will be on the top layer. I painted out some of it, but not all of it. But all the normal veins I have painted out from the epidermal layer. So let's go ahead and give this a test render and see how this looks. Again, this is only the top layer that will be seen with the radius set to about six. Okay, and that is our epidermal layer. And again, it's only the top layer. Now what I'm going to do is, by contrast, I'm going to plug the same value into the diffuse channel of the shader. Now there's two shaders here. You have overall color and you have diffuse color. The difference between the two is diffuse color is as you would expect. It's a diffuse color. If you turn off all the other subsurface scattering, that will basically act more or less like a blend shader at that point. Overall color acts like a multiplier and will multiply all the way through the system. So you can plug it into either one. You're going to get different looks. There's not really a right or wrong. It really becomes a judgment call at that point. What is the look you want to get? Again, what I'm going to do is just to compare. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this render here. I'm going to save that render so I can compare it. And I can actually come in here. some comment and I'm going to put so that way when I compare it to running it just in the diffuse we got an idea of which is which and I'm just going to pause the video while I set that up for all four shaders so this is subsurface scattering and this is in the diffuse channel Notice how we're getting a lot of the detail back as the diffuse. The subsurface scattering will soften all this if it's cranked too high. You'll notice all the detail here. And there it's gone. So we need to turn down the subsurface scattering to get all that detail we lost back. Here we've cranked down the subsurface scattering a little bit and have gotten some of the detail back. And as I scrub back and forth you can compare the two. So we're going to have to turn that subsurface scattering radius down even more to get some of that detail back in. So we're going to set that radius back down a little bit more to about 1.5. That's about half of what it was and we'll give it another re uh, test render. 
and you can see here we're getting some of that detail back in compare that to what we started with now again this is the diffuse and you can see all the detail that we want to capture so it needs to come down even more and that's really about it from this point on we have to simply balance between the different weights the weights of the diffuse the top layer and the mid layer and the backscatter it's more of the first three the backscatter acts independently it's more balancing the diffuse epidural and subdural layers and here we have the final render of our dog monster we've added specular mapping and bump mapping to the model we have all three layers set up as well as the backscatter you can see the backscatter happening in the legs and in the arms as it's spinning around as well as the interior of the mouth and that's about it join us next time as we start setting bones and skinning this creature so we can start animating him thank you very much <laughs>